the system of equations We must deal with them all at once Always looking for solutions Positive outlook overcomes Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This is a final video on orthogonal projections for a linear algebra class. And in this video, we're going to talk specifically about orthonormal decompositions, which are the ideal decompositions because the mathematics is much easier with orthonormal decompositions. Remember, a decomposition or an orthogonal decomposition is where you take a vector y from a vector space v and you project it onto a subspace w and you find that projection of y onto the subspace w as a vector. As long as you have an orthogonal basis for your subspace W, you can rewrite that projection or that shadow of Y onto that subspace W as a linear combination of those orthogonal basis vectors. And the coefficients of that linear combination are given by these dot products right here. And then I mentioned at that time, well, if your basis was not just orthogonal, but orthonormal, then those denominators are all just ones and you get this beautiful linear combination of your orthonormal basis vectors. So now we're just gonna further that statement a little bit. Suppose that W again is a subspace of a vector space V. Further suppose that W has an orthonormal basis U sub one through U sub P. We're gonna call that orthonormal basis S. And we're also gonna suppose as usual that Y is a vector in the vector space V. Hopefully that Y is not in our subspace W, otherwise this is very trivial. Now we're concerned about what is the vector that represents the shadow of Y onto that subspace W. But in this case, we don't have orthogonal basis vectors, but instead orthonormal basis vectors. And we had just stated very quickly that this was going to be the result, this linear combination of the orthonormal basis vectors. But the additional part in this theorem that is new to us is that this linear combination is going to be U times U transpose times Y, where U is the matrix whose columns are the orthonormal basis vectors. Now, honestly, this is not too terrible to derive. And in fact, it's something that usually you could derive by yourself, but I'm going to go ahead and do it in this video because there's not a lot of material here and it's just nice to see this. Since we've already shown that the orthonormal basis begets this left hand side right here for the projection of Y onto the subspace W, we're only going to prove that that linear combination is equal to U times U transpose times Y. So let's see. First, we're going to notice that U sub I transpose that is the row vector now times y is the ith row of u transpose times the vector y. That should make sense. This is technically the ith row of u transpose and this is technically y. So that is the ith row of u transpose times the vector y. That is u transpose times y could be rewritten as u sub one transpose times y all the way down to u sub P transpose times Y. Well, that's not too bad, but what does that mean? Then that should be, well, U times the quantity U transpose times Y. That's a no brainer. But we know now what U transpose Y is. It's that column vector right there. So now we have the matrix U, which is U1 dot 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 to U sub P as column vectors times this vector right here. But way back when, when we first learned to multiply a matrix times a vector, we learned that this product would be a linear combination of the sum of these column vectors, where the weights of those linear combinations were the entries of this vector right here. That is, that product would become this. And we can always rewrite that as the following because each of these are just scalars. So I'm just moving those scalars in front of the vectors. And by the way, by definition, U sub one transpose times Y is actually U sub one dotted with Y. And that is the same for U sub P transpose times Y It's just U sub P dotted with Y. So you could rewrite that last bit as this. And guess what that is? 
it's where we want to end up. We have now proven that u times u transpose times the vector y is equal to this linear combination right here, which is the projection of y onto the subspace w. Now, again, this is one of those situations where when you learn a theorem and you've seen the proof, you kind of forget what the theorem is. So just to reiterate, if you're handed a vector y in a vector space v and you want to find its shadow or its vector projection into your subspace w and if you happen to have an orthonormal basis for that subspace w there are two ways that you could write out what that vector is you can either compute it this way as a dot product of y versus each of those basis vectors and then those would be the weights of the actual basis vectors here, or you can make a matrix that contains as its columns, the orthonormal basis vectors, multiply it against the transpose of itself, and then multiply that against Y, and you will get the same result. Man, I really, really detest this example because I must have written down these vectors when I just wasn't thinking, and they are just no fun to work with, but I will persevere normalize u sub one and u sub two to create an orthonormal set. We already know they're orthogonal. These are the same vectors we've been working with. They create a really terribly unpleasant uh, computational process, but oh well. We're gonna normalize those two vectors so we have an orthonormal basis, and then we're gonna find the orthonormal projection of y onto w using both versions listed in theorem 10, which is our previous theorem there. Well, let's start by normalizing these vectors, which will not be fun. When I normalize a vector, I always try to relabel it. You do not want to say this is equal to u because it's not. So you might want to find a standardized notation that works best for you. I'm going to use that notation right there. It's the normalized vector u sub one. I just made this up right now, just so that I have a way of talking about it. It's the normalized version of u sub one. So let's see. So there we have that, that's a normalized version. And actually I'm gonna even make it better for myself. I'm gonna factor out a half, or you can consider that I just multiplied this two inside. It's probably an easier thing for most people to see. Anyhow, I'm gonna leave that ugly one over square root of 41 outside for now. I will have to deal with that eventually. Let's normalize u sub two. All right, there we go. Now we have an orthonormal basis for our subspace. Let's see what else they wanted us to do. I'm just gonna go ahead and cross that out, by the way. Now we're gonna find the orthonormal projection of y onto the span of these two vectors. Oh, I see. We were supposed to label those two vectors v1 and v2. This is yay for me for not reading. That's okay. I'm gonna change my instruction here and just say n, and this is a u, n, and this is a u. There we go. And let's see, we're gonna go ahead and find the orthonormal projection of y onto w. That is, find the shadow of y onto w using these orthonormal basis factors. There are two ways to do it. We're gonna do it the way we just learned, the brand new way. We're gonna create a matrix U. I'll use green since that was already on my pen. That matrix U is going to be the matrix whose columns are our orthonormal basis vectors. Now, in this case, I won't be able to avoid having pulling those radicals in there. It's just going to be a dastardly situation where I'm going to have to deal with that. Now, remember, we want to take that matrix U, multiply it by U transpose, and then multiply that by the vector Y. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly erase this. I'll say U times U transpose here, and then we'll leave some room for the vector Y in a moment. And like I said, we'll just throw the vector y off the back end here. The vector y is 2, 2, negative 1. Now looking at that product, it looks pretty terrible. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, we get down to this gnarly, gnarly situation, but we've done it. That is the shadow of y, the vector that represents the shadow of y onto the subspace w if given an orthonormal basis for w. Now, I did say do this using both theorems, or I should say both formulas. We've used this one. Now, the other formula you could have used 
it's this guy right here. Let's go ahead and do this and see how beastly it can be. So Y dotted with our normalized vector U sub one. So the dot product of these two vectors right here. Now, actually that doesn't look too terrible. I kept the scalar multiple outside, the one over root 41 outside, and I just dotted these two and then I'll go ahead and multiply by one, one over root 41 when I have to. But for right now that was negative four plus two, which is negative two, and then minus six, which is a negative eight. So far, so good actually. Let's see what y dotted with the normalized version of u sub two is. And you can see this is actually gonna much, be much cleaner, right? This ends up being, uh, what is that? Negative eight over root 41 times our normalized vector u sub one plus six over root five times our normalized version of the vector u sub two. So you can see that what we were saying earlier does match. We definitely prefer this tactic over the very first tactic. Now substituting in the vector, the normalized vector for u sub one, and note that the normalized vector for u sub one has a yet another one over root 41. And we get down to that right there. You can see how much nicer this is than the previous method. And we get negative eight over 41 times negative 216. And then this business right here. That's actually not too bad. You can always find the LCD and add them up and all that fun stuff. It will actually become this, but this actually showcases exactly what I want us to see, which is the following. If given a choice to work with the formula that we just learned, which is u, tra u times u transpose times y, or the formula from theorem eight, which is y dotted with u1 times the vector u sub one, plus so on and so forth down the line, well, and by the way, this formula is only viable if you have an orthonormal basis. You should always use this guy right there. It's just a much cleaner computation. And as such, you just want to use it if you're doing any by hand work. And that's probably pretty obvious from the work we did here, right? Incredibly obvious, in fact. U times U transpose times Y ended up being a massive mess. But that U times U tra transpose times Y is useful for theoretical things. So we might need that for very specialized use cases. Anyhow, that does it for this video and actually for this entire section of material. I hope you have a great day. Be a wonderful human being. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. For what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close, don't talk too much, that isn't cold. Sure, you may really hurt inside, it doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.